Hello! Let's see. So, if my mic is too loud or whatever, tell me please. There we go. What's up? <clears throat> so we're gonna wait like six or seven more minutes before we we start doing something. Uh, just in case more people are joining. <clears throat> so this should be Monster Cat music, and I did like pay five bucks for it, so hopefully we don't get any strikes. So I'm drinking a, like a Norwegian Indian Pale Ale, which isn't, doesn't sound right, but it's called, <laughs> it's called Ass, in English I guess, but in Norwegian it's Ås, not Ass, but so I'm drinking Ass tonight. That's, that's the start of today pretty much, yeah. I'm drinking Ass, so I guess that's, yeah. That was a good kickoff, pretty much. <laughs> so I got two more cans of ass, and then I'm then I'm gonna go over to coffee or work. pretty cheap as well okay I gotta stop now it's getting out of hand I gotta stop too far stopping halt So this photo is forever my wallpaper. I'm never switching again, like, permanently. This is my background now. Yeah, yeah. So I, I can't take credits for this amazing piece of art. That's uh, Drew, Drew from Trust the Sec draw this, or I guess Photoshop this. And I mean, if, if I didn't tell you it was Photoshop, you might actually think it was real. I mean, the biceps, pretty accurate, right? Real life might even be bigger. Uh, I know for a fact that David does have uh, a horse, uh, a unicorn, I, even, I didn't even get a name, so so he does have a unicorn in, in his garage, right next to his uh, Back to the Future mobile, uh, yeah, so, uh, and that unicorn does breathe fire, for sure, so I mean, <laughs> if I didn't tell you this was Photoshop, you probably, probably wouldn't even notice. Pretty accurate, but again, can't take credit for it. It's all, it's all Drew, Drew, who did this. This amazing piece of art. Yeah, yeah, maybe that. Maybe the eagle is a bit far fetched, right? So this is happening just as the eagle flies by with the American flag. Maybe that was a bit, bit too far. Yeah, that's probably it throws people off. Definitely right, but everything else, hundred percent legit. Would have happened. Hashtag real life. And I don't think you can see it, but there's even an like, can I, can I like, how do you do this in? Uh, I think it's personalize. Background like, 
choose a fifth. Oh, I have to activate my windows to choose a fifth. Okay. But in the in the original, there's actually like a neon cat in the background. Let me show you. So this is the this is the actual photo. Yeah, look look at this. That's so good. That's that's so good. That's like some high quality photoshopping right there. Like look at this. It's amazing. So what are you guys drinking if you're having a beer? What's your poison of choice? It doesn't have to be beer though. It doesn't have to be alcoholic, but I mean... Yeah, the Mario, Mario Castle is also pretty... Pretty, pretty detailed touch. accidentally started blend when I set up this VM. I have no idea what even that is. But apparently it's something. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install burp and uh, proxy whatever it's called the admin for Firefox. try to elaborate a bit more in later but I think the plan for today is to basically make an Office 365 account enumerator validator uh, and so the, so the concept isn't new and the technique I'm gonna be using isn't new but I kind of I guess I wouldn't say rediscovered but I sort of stumbled upon this technique technique a couple of weeks ago and then I searched it up and found out that this wasn't anything new but I wanted to sort of uh, <laughs> showcase um, how, how you could sort of integrate that in your workflow, how you would look at a, a, like a post or get request going on wire with, with burp and then sort of, I guess, I, I guess reverse engineer it back to a, to a, to a C-sharp request uh, in code, how, how I do that, that, that workflow, because that's basically a, a great foundation for doing anything. Like if you see any logic out in the wild, the software is doing some logic or malware is doing some logic, and you want to recreate it to fiddle with it or or mass send it, this this would be sort of that workflow you could follow. Um, so that's sort of the plan really for the stream. Uh, make a Ultra 65 account validator enumerator. Uh, yeah. And then I mean if Hey, Rasta in the house. So, <clears throat> me and Rasta sort of have a have a deal. So when I'm I'm watching his stream, I, I, I'll be sure to point out everything he does wrong, even though it's not wrong. So I'm I'm like the I'm the, like the bad guy on his stream. So I I can't imagine he'll he'll be doing anything other than my stream than just uh, just just slaying me publicly whenever I do something wrong. <laughs> So later on, when I should be uh, creating an interface and I'm not, then Rustermaster is probably gonna, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna let me, let me know that I should be making an interface on this. Uh, yes, yeah, so we got burp, and now we need uh, an extension that I do not know the name of. It's like uh, Proxy Fox. That's what I want to say. Ah, oh, it is Foxy Prox. I just. This is the wrong way. <laughs> uh, right, so... 
Yeah, so if you haven't used Foxy Prox before, it's basically a proxy switcher manager for, for Firefox. Uh, so you can add a bunch of proxies and then you can switch between them. It's great when you want to quickly switch over to use Burp or uh, if you want to quickly switch over to that SSH uh, proxy that you have for your client network or whatever. Uh, so I can recommend that. I'm just going to make a new profile called Burp. It's going to point to the localhost and port 8080, which I believe is the default one. Save that and then fire burp, right? <laughs> For sure. It's, yeah, it's pretty, that's correct. Right? It's pretty, it's the most common combination ever. Burp and Foxy Burps. Right, so uh, by default, Burp is going to listen on 8080, and then we need to install, I can show you though, but we need to install our certificate. So if I try to go to Google right now, it's going to complain like, hey, this isn't okay. Uh, right, the certificate that we're getting belongs to Port Swigger. It doesn't match uh, Google, something's wrong, right? So what you want to do is that you want to, I don't, I don't remember if this still works. Can I do like uh, 880? Yeah, I can, okay. You just go to local state 80 and then you can just download the certificate. Uh, the certificate. And that's there. That's, I think it's under options, right? I always mess up finding this. G certificates, okay. I didn't mess up finding it. Just import that, say yes, yes. Okay, okay. And if I try to go to Google now, it should be okay. Right, and then we can see the traffic captured here in the history. I want to exclude that straight away. Okay, let's just let's just not do that. So I know there people have shared a bunch of rules for burp that you can add, that you can add to get get this stuff this noise to go away, like the fire fireprox uh, portal and stuff. I'm just not going to bother with it. But the thing I wanted to share, or the thing I wanted to show you, is that I, uh, if you go to like login uh, windows.net, which is basically the same as uh, login.microsoftonline.net, .com, I mean, uh, and you log into a tenant, right? So let's say I log into blah, 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 blah at legitcorp.net. And it's going to say the username may be incorrect. Make sure you type it correctly, blah, blah, blah. So. The Microsoft Online Portal is basically doing some sort of check in the background to make sure this account exists, right? Uh, because if I type an account that I do know I have, like Odvar Mo, it's going to redirect me. It's going to be like, okay, I'm trying to sign you in. So, so there is some sort of logic implemented into loginmicrosoftonline.com that validates <laughs> that validates uh, whether or not the accounts exist, right? So let's try this again. If I clear my burp history and I go like blah, 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 and I go next, you can see there's a post request being made. Uh, if we just throw that into repeater and take a look at it, I, by the way, I, I'm not sure if I hate or love this change with the, with the inspector thing here and the, this, there's, yeah, no comment, okay? Not super happy with it. Uh, and if we resend this request, we get this. Uh, this JSON response back, right? This JSON object. So it's one object, not a list or an array, and it has a couple of properties. So it has username, which is the username that we requested to check if it exists. And then we have a response, uh, or I guess, right, uh, some parameters that defines this. So if, ex uh, if exists result one. So that's pretty interesting, right? So maybe the one indicates a, tr a true, like a Boolean value, so it's, it does exist. But that wouldn't make any sense because this doesn't exist. So, so we know that the, if, if, this, if this is one, it doesn't exist, right? So let's, uh, let's clone this. Okay, we can't do that. Let's just uh, grab a normal repeat of this. And let's uh, change it to an address that does exist. And see what the response is, right? On remote, send it. And we get if exist result zero. So this, like at first glance, may indicate that if, if, if we get a response with if, if exists result zero, then the account does exist. And if we get a result with if exists one, or maybe something something different, right? This is a very, this is a really small sample, right? So we can't really 
100% confirm that these are the values that we will get. We would have to try with a bunch of other emails from, from maybe different tenants and stuff. But like one and a zero, that's pretty typical, right? So we, let's take that, take that assumption. Uh, so how would we move this over to code so we could actually uh, like enumerate like a thousand emails or even brute force using like the, uh, you know, yeah, if you, if you don't know about this, this is pretty nice. So it's, I think it's called statistically possible usernames or something. Just don't look at my writing. Rastam House, close your eyes. Yeah, this, this is gold, right? So this, I believe uh, is a collection of uh, username, uh, I mean, I guess first name, last name combinations in different formats. So, I mean, this, this could be super useful when I guess you're really brute forcing, you're really just guessing accounts, right? Um, but I mean, just from from the, the email interaction with your client or some basic OSINT, you, you're able to determine what the email format is, right? Is it just the first name? Is it first name and then the last, uh, the first two letters from the last name? Is it uh, first name, then the last letter in the first name, last name? Like what, what's the combination, right? And I know I use this a lot, like this is, if it's a large company and I can't get uh, a, like a solid list of emails from dump databases, LinkedIn, uh, some Google dorking, if I can't find any uh, like uh, Google buckets, uh, sorry, AVS buckets or Azure uh, storage accounts that have public information regarding your email accounts, then this is my go-to, right? At least for American or, uh, yeah, I guess at least for American companies, right? This wouldn't apply to Norwegian companies or Swedish companies or whatever, right? Uh, so, okay, so what, let's say I have like, I don't know exactly how many users are in each of these. I think it's like, I don't want to click on one of them because it's going to take like an, like a year to load. But I think it's like 44,000 at least. I think it's even more, 44,000 combinations. So if I want to run that against, against this endpoint, uh, how would I do it? How would I recreate that? <clears throat> so obviously I would do it in C Sharp. And that's what I'm gonna do because that's my thing. Uh, but it would be, I guess, pretty similar to Python. I feel that's a cheap go-to. This process would be very similar for Python, right? Or, yeah, but but it's true, it would be pretty similar. All uh, right, so I guess we're going to make uh, Ultra 6.5 enumerator. So I'm gonna make a new project here. I'm gonna select C Sharp. I'm gonna use the core applications because I want the uh, compatibility across platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac. Gonna call it Office Enum or Ultra 65 Enum, whatever. Um, okay, I always do this. I always do this. Uh, in this, I miss, I <laughs> misunderstand this for the name of the project while it's actually a search bar. So I start to search and I'm like, what? But this is just a search. So you have to click it next and then you can type the project name. I always do this, right? So while this creates, uh, let's take a look at what parameters this uh, common get credential, get credential type post uh, request needs, right? So I see, <clears throat> I see these, and these look like uh, CRF tokens, right? Uh, they might be to make sure that we just can't spam the endpoint. So what happens if we remove them? Like, uh, what happens if I remove them? Will it give me a bad response or will you just simply ignore it? Okay, so at first glance that seems okay. I mean, we can do that. Uh, if I try to change the country to say the US, that's still okay. And if I now try to change this to something random, it should go one, right? Okay, so we, didn't, we don't need the flow token stuff uh, and we don't need the, I think it was original request stuff. Which is great because then we don't have to <clears throat> load the first login page and scrape the HTML for these values. We can just skip supplying them, which is awesome. Uh, also, let's see if we need a cookie set. I, I'm pretty sure we don't need the cookie set. Yeah, okay. So this is great. We basically don't need anything. Uh, let's try the canary as well to, to do this request. Uh, let's hope this works. Okay, it does. Awesome. So this may indicate that we should be able to just spam the heck out of this endpoint with different combinations and see if we get any hits, right? Uh, and for that, 
we want to be using threading, right? Because we don't want to do one, one request at a time. And for that, we're going to be using tasks. And for that, we want to be probably going to be using the await command, right? So the problem here is that if I do, if I, just to show, like if I do a simple using statement and then I do like var HTTP client uh, equals new, god damn. I swear to God, this is only because Rustamus is in the chat. If Rustamus wasn't here, I would be like super smooth. Right, so that was, okay, sorry if you didn't catch that, but right. Okay, so it fails, it doesn't understand why why I, I can't, what is this HTTP client stuff? So I do like control dot or punk, punk, punctuation mark? <laughs> control dot, I'm gonna go for dot, control dot. And it's gonna go like, okay, are these are these possible solutions? I'm like, okay, it wants to import a new library. Yeah, that's the solution, and it does it, right? And then usually I would do like HTTP client. Okay, that's a possible solution as well, right? Uh, I use HTTP client and then get async, and then I believe it's just the URL, URE, and you can give it as a string, that's awesome. And if I now try to do a wait on this, it's gonna complain. It's gonna say like, you can't do this because the wait operator can only be used within an async method. And then maybe you would try to go like async task. And then this is gonna complain. Okay, I gotta import threading, that's fine. Then this is gonna be, be complain or it isn't gonna run because the main isn't allowed to be async. So what you have to do is that you have to create sort of, a, I guess a wrapper, right? So I, use, uh, I usually just do this. Oh my God, please don't kill. Okay, thank you. I usually just do this and then I do like async main I do uh, async task and then I gotta import task again and then in the main one I just do async main uh, get result I believe it is oh sorry get result get waiter get result I just do this so I guess it's I can't try it or what? Oh, I need args, right? So I just sort of pass through the args through this. Uh, it can be in that one here, okay? So I have to try that then. Uh, maybe this is from me doing net framework then. At least in net framework, you can't have an uh, async main. It probably makes maybe sense that you can have in net core. Anyhow, so this is how I would do it if I was doing it in net framework, uh, I guess. <laughs> Uh, which would basically start the main, then just pass the args and wait for this whole thing to to uh, to get done, and then in here you can have as many awaits as you want, right? Awesome. Okay. So in here we want to read a list of uh, usernames, um, and we want to loop through async all those usernames, and probably. I'm just gonna print the responses, but like in a general sense, you would either wanna save them to like a text file, which could be problematic with file logs, or you wanna write it to a database. But like, I'm just gonna go to print, print the results, print the valid accounts, because I'm lazy. Uh, we'll see if, if I start doing that or not. So uh, reading a list of usernames is pretty easy in C Sharp. So you just do file, dot, and it's gonna do this, and go back, control C, uh, control dot using system IO and then you have a function called read all lines which does exactly what it says it takes a file and it reads line one by one and puts them into an array so you don't have to read it all as a text and then do the split and then uh, probably we would like arg the first element of the arg in here and now I'm starting to wonder if it's arg zero is actually the, f the name of the program we're gonna find that out of this uh, username array Right, uh, if I can spell, that would be amazing. Um, so we got the usernames. Uh, let's. So the first thing, since we, <clears throat> this is a nifty one. So I can't remember exactly what the name is, but I just googled like uh, async uh, parallel await. What's up? Um, I can't remember what the actual name was, but uh, 
if something could load that would be amazing so probably somebody suggested it here it's something with d i think it's called dyson no it's obviously not called dyson but something something let's just do that let's just try this this soon this soon let's see if that's a thing let's add get up to it this is basically a session in google dorking at this point right it's not i think it's this does sync yeah this is this is the this is the one i do i use when i want to do stuff real quick um simultaneously so i think the example we would like to use is maybe something like like give me an example that isn't complicated please if not, I'm gonna open my project and pull an example from my project. So, this isn't, these are not the ones I'm looking for actually. You know what? I'm just gonna pull one from my, because I, I'm not up for reading documentation, because I, apparently at some point I did. I'm just gonna pull it from an existing project off screen here. So just, just let me work some magic behind the scenes, scenes and then I'll. <clears throat> I'll show you what to use But if you guys got any questions or suggestions or whatever just hit them in the chat Like I'm open for answering pretty much anything while I do stuff So yeah, this is the one I'm looking for this one right here and then it's This right so this is the one I'm looking for and then it's this and then max degrees of parallelism oh Okay, it's not gonna recognize that, so I have to off, let's just two, bam, bam, and then it would be like this, and then it's not gonna recognize this. Yes, but I can you set max degrees off? And is it async? Don't destroy me. <laughs> <coughs> so let me just copy that statement over there uh, right but it does have that is true I think you also have one that's just not tasks I like just a straight up peril for each uh, so that's nice and this is called dust sync so if I go to it's it's a nugget right so if I go to the nugget package manager I can probably just search this up <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, okay, so it's this one. Async in numerator. I yeah, whatever. Let's install this. Right. <clears throat> So I think I can just import it now. Yep. So there we go. Yes. But I don't think parallel.4each has max degrees of parallels. Which is what makes this so fast. You could probably do it in some hacky way though. This is just the way I've done it. Uh, right. So in here we can go like bra. And this will go super quick. I think we're gonna keep it at like 50 or 100. Let's just do 50 for now. And in here we want to call our like attempt, uh, HTTP attempt function or whatever, right? Which performs the actual get and then uh, returns the bool, bool, boolean for if it's a valid account or if it's not a valid account. And we also need to add some special sauce in the beginning here because there are edge cases. Uh, there are edge cases where this technique I know this from, from before, so I'm sort of cheating, but there are edge cases where tenant, tenants are set up in a way that even though you, you give it like a, a, a name that is definitely not valid, it will go through and think it's valid. I think it's how you set up AD connect, AD sync, right? Depends on which way you sync or if it's a hybrid solution, whatever. I don't have a, too much uh, like knowledge on that, so I can't say for sure, but there's definitely uh, some tenants that would just accept anything here and then we get a bunch of false positives. So what you want to do is that you want to attempt one time with like a username that does not exist 
and if you get it through back like this exists then you know it's a bunch of false monsters okay depends on where the user originates so it's oh hello Olaf welcome okay gotcha right so it depends if the user was uh, synced from on perm AD or if it was created in the AAD right that's awesome that you can just straight up respond to that here because I know this technique is used in uh, MSO spray I think no it's not in I can't remember I think it's in the ultra 65 spray then there's so many spraying ones right now so I think it's here yeah no <laughs> Is it? Uh, oh, it's Ultra 65 Enum. That is. It's like there's a millions of these scripts right now. Awesome to have you in the shadow off. That's amazing. Uh, so this, yeah, this, this right here. Uh, to discovery and um, office.com Enum, right? It says this method only works for organizations that are subscribers of the Exchange Online and do not have on-premise or hybrid deployments of Exchange Server. Okay, so it basically means that if you don't have if your exchange server is fully cloud, then it's okay. It's basically what it says, right? Yeah, because this uses the same stuff, gets the same output and stuff. So this would be non-existent when the account does not exist, if exists is the one. So the, the weird thing is I, I haven't uh, like gone into that rabbit hole, but I had the tenant like a couple of weeks ago that responded with like five. Like if exists result five. And I was like, what the hell is five? Is that is that like uh, inactive user? Is that like created but not synced? Like what is that? And I haven't really gotten to the point to dig into that, but there's definitely more than just zeros and ones being responded in the if exist result, which could probably give us another way of enumerating. Uh, right, okay, so the main thing I wanted to talk about is that how I would approach uh, putting this stuff here into C-sharp. So what I would do, uh, if I were doing a bigger project, I would just create a folder called models. And then I would create like, uh, uh, what would I call this? I would probably name it after the, the burp pop, so get credential type uh, response, resp, and then a get response, and then a request as well. Extension that request. There we go. And then the sweet. If you didn't know this, you're going to be blown away. But you probably know this. If you copy the JSON, just straight up copy it. You can go into the class, and then you can. So this is the response. I want to put that into the response. You can go in here, and you can go edit, uh, paste special as JSON. Boom. Uh. And I, I don't think this is anything secret. So you're probably not going to be mind blown. But the first time I saw this, I was like, what? Been using the been using the half shitty online generators for like years or like at least a year before I figured out that you could or before I before Stack Overflow told me that I can do this. So this is amazing. Obviously, we're going to be using uh, oh this is a hard one. So I call it New Newtonsoft. It's probably not pronounced Newtonsoft. It's probably more like Newtonsoft or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? It's the JSON library. <laughs> this Python looks weird. Uh, so it's probably, it's just the, the JSON library that everybody uses. Like, hands down, everybody uses it, right? You can't, don't use anything else. We're gonna be that guy. Let's go ahead. Uh, so now you have all this stuff and you can just schmack up use it, right? So uh, let's just paste in the request as well. This, this, uh, uh, like, yeah, what's it called? Monster Cat music ain't that bad. Like, I thought it would suck. There's a good alternative in... <laughs> uh, I don't follow Olaf. There's a good alternative in that fire, right? I don't follow. If this is troll, I'm sorry. And then we probably want to make like a, uh, we could make it private, doesn't matter. Oh yeah, yeah, right. So I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, I I still push stuff in like uh, fucking Net4, Netcore2, like 
mm, I'm that guy. So I don't know. <laughs> but there probably is. I mean, at this point, I would be amazed if they just haven't like merged the Newton Soft Library into the into the master. Because that's what everybody uses. Okay, that's true, right? Because if I when I release this, if this is not gonna release stuff, but when I release stuff, I either do the huge ass binary, which is like I think it's called compile application single or something. It's like a trigger, right? Awesome. Which will make the binary huge, but uh, yeah, like like at least 70 megs. Yeah, sounds about right, Rasta. Right, so it, it's at least 70 megs, I think. But it works though, and we have network connection, right? Or I use the, the famous uh, Foodie, uh, Foodie, right? Which merges the DLLs into the binary. But sure, I guess it's one less DLL, right? For sure. Uh, so what was I doing? Private, private async task, just gonna return a bool, and it's gonna be called uh, get, no, that's not great. Uh, it's gonna be called like validate account. And it's gonna take a input a string, which is the email, I guess username, right? And then it's going to take a string country as well, but I'm gonna just make it default to US. And then inside here, uh, so we could go two ways, I guess. Actually, we want to do this. And somebody stop me if this is too bad. I think we want to be doing this. So I think we want to go like this. New, oh my god, new HTTP client like this. And then put the if this thing in here. Because we definitely don't want to create a new release, eh? Ah? <laughs> we definitely don't want to create a new HTTP client for every time that we run this thread. That's stupid. I think, I think that's stupid. Stop me if I'm wrong, right? So, uh, there's a couple of ways we can go about this. I, I guess a cool way would just to be like, this HTTP client, that would be pretty cool, right? That would be pretty smooth, but I'm not sure if it's possible, right? Yeah, definitely, right? So, extension method must be defined in a non-generic static class, okay? I can make that static, right? That shouldn't affect too much. So now I think I can go like HTTP client, validate account, and then await it. Ooh, that was, that was pretty smooth actually. If this works, that was, that was pretty smooth. Like usually I would do something weirder, maybe just assign, assign the HTTP client a, like a global property for the, for the class, but I mean, this works. So let's see, I mean, C sharp applications, especially not .NET Core, isn't exactly known to be, you know, system resources uh, light. <laughs> yeah, they look so clean, right? It looks like this function was like made in the HTTP client. Looks super clean. Ah, oh, I have to grab a new beer soon. I, if you didn't join early, you didn't get this, but I, I'm drinking Oz. It's this Norwegian beer. Indian Pale Ale, that's called Oz. It's really good. You should try some time. It's really good. You're drinking Ars. Oh no, that's a that's a whole... Like, I tried to put a cool twist onto that and you just ruined it for me. Like, I was going for ass, you said, Ars? <laughs> Odvar had me drinking that. For, for real though, did he bring it? Uh, extension methods, okay, let's make it static, that's fine. Not all called, okay, so. Oh yeah! You were on the Hackon? Hackon 20... 2019? Nice, 2020, okay. So in this uh, this method, we want to basically do HTTP post, post async, uh, and then we want to do like var uh, HTTP rec await. And then we want to do, yeah, I'm a var guy. I can, me and Rasta can like gang together if somebody doesn't like var. 
uh, then we can do this, which is uh, uh, HTTP HTTP rec content. Why can't you just let me do this even though, okay, I have to define it, right? So uh, in here we want a URI, which we have, so we can just right click copy, uh, copy the URL. And does it want it as a string or a URI? Okay, so string is fine. And let's just remove this at the end here. Pretty sure we don't need to have that. Let's, let's just make sure. I am a waterman. Yeah, we don't need to have that. So I'm gonna remove that. And then... And then we need some HTTP content, right? So I think, I think we can do new a string HTTP content. Content string. Okay, so there's something called, there we go, string content, right? And then we have to give it some data and we have to give it, uh... no, I think we can define like the encoding, that's fine, but we want to media type, that's what, because we have to, uh, I'm, I'm talking while I'm doing stuff right now, I'm sorry. Like, let's use text encoding, I'll explain this. And then we have to give it like the JSON content type at the end here, and then the the JSON object that we want to send. Uh, so basically, we're doing a post request to this URI, and we're giving it a content type of string string content, which I'm guessing just inherits. Okay, actually inherits by the way content. Whatever, uh, it's a content type in in for HTTP client. We want to give it a content. We want to give it an encoding, which is typically UTF UTF-8. And we want to give it a media type, which is basically content type, right? So I think I have to check this up, but I think it's application dash JSON. Let me JSON content type. Oh, you can actually see that in Burp, right? So the content type is application JSON. Wow, I was right. Damn. This is this this is the first for me. Like I didn't have to Google anything. That's that's the first for me. Like give me a star in the book, guys. Come on, guys. Right, and then we have to give it a content, right? So we have to create a new instance of the class we created, uh, type request. We have to set the username and set the country, and then serialize it from JSON into a string. Oh, I got a star, that's amazing. So, <laughs> var, uh, I think this is just gonna be the post content. No, that's wrong. We should call it, what did I do? We should call it something that I'm not gonna type. Uh, and then new, and then we have to import models probably. Fixed formatting, no, I'm gonna import models. What is wrong? It doesn't have a constructor, is that the problem? Is it because the name is the same as the class? Let's do this. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, that was it. Uh, new, right? There we go. And then we just define username, which is username. And then we define the country, which is country. And then we do this. So we have the new object, and then we we do the magic JSON convert. Control dot <laughs> or control enter install package. Find and install the latest version. It's gonna do that. While it does that, I'm gonna grab a beer. Give me a second. And I, got, I need a new ass. My ass is empty. I found a new ass, guys and girls. If there's any of those here. So I just gotta give a shout out though. So if you actually wanna see an actual developer create something not trashy, you should go watch Rust Mouse stream at on the, I wanna say Wednesdays? I think it's on Wednesdays at like 2 p.m. When's your stream Rust? Now come on, do a shameless plug. You gotta do a shameless plug. Err. You don't like it? So we do serialize object and then that 
basically takes pretty much anything, right? And serializes it, so we can just give it this object. And there we go. Uh, and then we gotta do so it sends this request it gets a request uh, uh, Thursdays okay Thursdays I was wrong go to rest of our streams on Thursdays um, it's at 8 right 2 p.m. EST I think so <laughs> Right, so we, we do the uh, we do the request and we get a response message, uh, and from that response message we want the content and we want to read it as a string. Now I think you can do no read it as string. This like dude that that's my disclaimer. You can't do this. So oh, this music is actually pretty good. I'm almost dancing guys so uh, if we check at the so we want to do a quick check right so there's no point of reading the the response if there's not a valid response if we get anything else then uh, I use this so is successful status code uh, gets a value indicating that if the HTTP response was successful uh, I am not sure specifically what status codes this checks for Obviously, I can't check that because that would be too easy. But I'm um, it if it's a 200, yeah, any 200, right? So any 200 is actually what we're looking for here, since we got 200. Okay, uh, so we can just check if it's 200, uh, and if it is 200 or anything starting with a two, uh, then I will get the response, and I will try to uh, uh, deserialize this object back to response, which would be a JSON convert. Deserialize object and then do get credential response and then the HTTP response. So now we we basically we got the input, we created the the uh, the object and we sent that object as a JSON object, <laughs> finally to the to the endpoint. We got a response. If that response has a status code of something starting with a two, which is an okay response, and anyhow. Uh, then we read uh, the data as a string and then we deserialize that data into an object So now since we got the object, it's much easier for us to check if uh, if, ex if exist result equals one if you wanted to do this r Like even dirtier than I did it just now you could you could just do like This is this is so bad never do this but like you could just do like like this you could. I'm just saying you could. It would be super shitty. You could. But, but we're not gonna do it like that. Get away. Right, so I wanna check if that get credential type response, uh, which is if exist result equals one. If it's equals one, it doesn't exist. Wow, this music is actually pretty good. Like, what the? Ugh. So if it exist result equals one, it doesn't exist. Actually, this is wrong. We want to do if it equals zero, we want to return true. Else, we want to return false. So this is the way I like to think about it. When you're doing something like this, I like to only uh, sort of <laughs> assume what's <laughs> okay how, how am I going to explain this I I make the function always return false like I make it function the function always fail and I I only specifically make logic to check if it if it should not fail right if it's oh, now he's now <sighs> yes in this case, I'm not gonna do it because just because you said it, right? So do you? Don't you have to? I think you made a mistake. You have to do like this, right? No, can you only do this? Okay, wow. I never make mistakes. Okay. 
We're even now, Rasta. It's okay. We're even. <laughs> right, so if it's a successful status code, we, we read the data as content as string. We digitalize it into an object, so like this, right? And then if that uh, if the if exists result property in that object is zero, then the uh, the username and the account exists, right? So now we got the basics of it. And uh, let me, we can just smack that in here, right? And we need to put a username in here. So this would be username list. Okay, that's wrong. That's username array. Yeah. And then we take a username and we plop that username straight into that function. And if that function returns true, then we write constant, then we write that the, uh, that the, uh, it's valid. Like this, right? Because there's no point of printing everything that's not valid. So we did it, guys! It's done! Uh, one thing that I, I like to do, which is like, uh, I, I won't call it a pro tip, but one thing I like to do is I like to uh, pivot all my traffic from HTTP client into Burp, so I can actually see the traffic that my C# -sharp code is producing, so that I can compare it with your, the original traffic that I'm trying to reproduce. And this 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 is an easy way to see like, am I missing a header? Does this endpoint need like a proper origin to respond? Like, what what is the deal here? So I usually do that, and I'm go I'm gonna I'm gonna just rip that from from straight up from another from another code I have on the right left side here because I'm not gonna I don't remember how to write this basically right. So it's something like so it's this this part right here. This is awesome. I love doing this. So what you do is that you create a new web proxy. You have to import that uh, module, and then you point it to burp. Uh, you set user credentials false, and then you put that proxy into an HTTP client handler, and then you tell that HTTP client handler to also just ignore H uh, like certificate checks. So this way you won't get any errors on the burp certificate. This is an easy way to do that. And then you just uh, make that HTTP client, uh, client handler uh, an input uh, for the HTTP client constructor. This is awesome. Like this is, this is mwah. Like when you when you when you are up late at night, and you you don't understand why your hacky code isn't working because it's hacking. This is amazing. Like I can now I can when I fire this up, we can easily. Like just go into Burp and see all the traffic, and we're good. It's so easy to debug stuff. Uh, so I mean, I'm tempted to try this. Just be yeah, we need one more thing, right? So we talked about that the the endpoint um, might produce false positives uh, depending on how it's set up. So how can we check for a false positive? Well, if I try to 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 uh, validate a username that I know doesn't exist. Then I mean, there's like then then I know it's a false positive, and there's no point of running this technique, right? <laughs> no, no, no. You 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 spell up Firefox? No, it's called uh, no, it's called Fire, not Firefox, but like Proxyfire, right? <coughs> so this is pretty cool, and this will get you part the past the burp certificate as well. Uh, okay, so let's try that. So what I'll do, I just I'm just gonna take like a uh, var uh, test test. Oh my god, test username or I guess known bad username. I'm gonna take the array. I'm just gonna pluck out the first item in the array, and then I'm going to uh, split on the at right. Oh my god, come on. And then I'm going to take that first element uh, and rip. Okay, no, I'm, I'm gonna take everything after that. And. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this. I need just need just need my brain to like function. Like I haven't been drinking for so long. I'm pretty. There we go. Like I might get drunk just by this one beer. And then we need something random inside here, right? So we and I, I stole this from. I didn't steal it from Rasta Mouse, but like it's a pretty nice way to. To not having to generate like some random stuff. Just use a Gwid. Uh, and then... No, I think it's just a Gwid. I think it's just Gwid, new Gwid. Yeah, right. Two string. And then just replace... These with nothings. And then you have... I don't even think you need two string. No, you don't. Yeah, you need two string. Okay. So this is a way to just generate a random string that we know doesn't exist with Nintendo's. I mean, if it, yeah, right. So this is just, instead of having to pull up like the random stuff and give it a shard set and give it a length, <laughs> you just do this and you don't have to do anything else, right? So this is just generating a random uh, user account that we know doesn't exist. And then we check. So I guess this is really our Canary account, right? Canary account. Canary is the name. If this canary exists, we know that this tenant is only going to give us false positives with these methods. And I guess we also know that the the tenant has sync on prem sync with some exchange stuff that we read, right? So this is this might give us some some information about the tenant as well. And if uh, our canary account hits. Bad tenant. Cannot end. Him. And then after that we just break. I mean I mean we just environment exit. Environment exit. I don't know exit codes, I don't give it. <laughs> right, so we, we generate a username that we for sure 100 percent doesn't know it doesn't exist. We check if it's valid. If it's valid, we know that this enumeration method isn't going to work for this tenant, and we just quit. So hopefully we don't have to actually get here. Uh, because obviously we want it to work and then this is that right um, so that's cool now we need a, a bunch of usernames uh, and I'm thinking I'm thinking maybe I should just pull it from github for lulz um, nah okay I have, a, I have a username list I'm going to use, so let me just like put it here, uh, or here, or I just make a temp folder at C, like stream, whatever. I'm just gonna put, 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 that's a new word guys, put. I'm just going to put, a, put, put, put uh, like a username list for a test tenant I have. This Onwar, with which Onwar is actually in, which is quite funny. And then I'm going to put that username list there. I'm just going to override the arg. Because I'm a lazy guy. So we get a username array from this, and then we, we see what happens, right? So I guess we're ready to run. Now, I, it has never happened to me that anything I ever wrote ever worked the first time I ran it. So this would be a first for me, 100%. So let's just see if this works. So let's run it, and then let's just clear the prox, the burp history. So clear a Reno, and let's hope the VM doesn't crash, right? Oh, come on. Is it this slow? Like, for reals? There we go, okay. So, usernames. It did get all the usernames correctly. Odvar is in here. Adam Valle is in here. There's some ruffle names in here. Gonna create a new proxy. Create a new HTTP client handler. Put that HTTP client handler into the HTTP client. Then it's going to generate... Uh, a canary username 
which actually looks okay. So it has the at legit cop.net and then it has like a random JIT in front of it. That's definitely not going to be a, a valid username. It's going to attempt the request. And if, okay, so it, it did go through that. So let's look at, okay, so it did a post request in, we see it in burp. And uh, we actually see it, this was rather successful, right? So we did a post request to common get credential type. We sent the humongously uh, long use, uh, username that we know is bad, and it, it returns if exists result one, which means that we can uh, enumerate uh, users in this way for this tenant, and that therefore it doesn't hit the canary, and we proceed. And now it's going to just run this super quick. So let's. I mean, this is a pretty tight VM, so I'm not sure like how this VM is going to handle it. But I mean, let's just go for it. Wow. Right, and uh, there it goes. I enumerated about 100 usernames. We can see everything here in Burp. We can check the responses. We can filter and make sure if we have any problems. And this has really, I, I'm doing a private project right now that I'm not going to release for quite a while where this technique has kind of helped me a lot using Burp because then this thing spends a lot of time getting information. Yeah, they're all valid. Yeah, I. I uh, I pulled the username list from my test tenant, right? So it actually works pretty nice, and it's pretty quick as well, right? I could I could e easily push this to 700, e easily. Maybe not in this VM, but you definitely could, and this would like enumerate super quick. So let's actually let's try that. Um, I should try to run it. This poor VM though, it's running like I think on two gigs or something. Yeah, that was that was pretty fast actually. Like we did, uh, yeah. So uh, I don't think Microsoft will rate limit me. Let's see if they. My experience is that if they rate limit me, they will usually provide a header, like a rate limiting header, letting me know like which count I'm at and how many attempts I have left. And they don't provide that, so I'm assuming they're not rate limiting me. Uh, but it would be really easy to implement something like Firefox into this, right? To, to try to make the IPs rotate uh, and as far as I understand this you know or obviously this doesn't trigger any login attempts and I don't think a tenant is able to log this right correct me Olaf you're probably the like the god who would know this but I don't think it's this is something that that no yeah I don't think this is something a tenant would would actually log and I guess for good reasons but I mean yeah so this is a quick way, I guess, for enumerating tenants. Uh, and that canary is really helpful if we can't enumerate those tenants. Um, now, if you wanted to like, yeah. So I guess we could, let's just make sure the args work before. I'm gonna post this as a gist. I'm not sure anybody's going to use it though, because I mean, it's already implemented in Python, which is much less like resource heavy. Uh, I don't think the Python one has the canary thing though. But I mean, meh. Uh, I'm just gonna add a console. I'm, I'm actually unsure. So, uh, that's actually a pro tip that I'm gonna give away. Azure Smart Lockout is actually pretty smart right now. And uh, I have been playing a lot, and I mean like a shit ton with Azure Smart Lockout to sort of try to figure out what makes it uh, what makes it tick. Like how, and I've, I've tried a lot of stuff. I've tried using, I actually at one point, I I spanned up like a thousand EC2 instances in AVS, just so I could assign a unique IP to every account that I'm spraying. So it wouldn't, so I would never like reuse the same IP for different accounts. And I tried, I tried randomizing user agents, proxy headers, uh, password and, and uh, username combinations in terms of that they wouldn't be alphabetically in order. But my, my like, main conclusion with Azure Smart Lockout is that if you, if you spike login attempts, it's that stupid. Like if you spike a thousand login attempts in like two minutes, Azure Smart Lockout is going to notice that something isn't, that something is off. Basically, if you, 
if you sort of descend from that typical pattern that the company has, like the baseline for the amount of logins and stuff, it's gonna notice. So, so my uh, the way I spray. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, actually a great control, like generally a good control, and I've had very few cases where Azure Smart Lockout blocks me, but doesn't, uh, does, and also blocks the user that's actually trying to access the account. So Azure Smart Lockout definitely knows uh, where the user is coming from, if that user has been uh, using this account from that IP for a period of time, whatever. I don't know specifically, obviously, but that, yeah. So Azure Smart Lockout is like generally good, like super good. So any like typical just spraying like 3,000 accounts in two minutes and sleeping isn't going to work anymore. You're going to get a shit ton of false positives and you're going to start to wonder if you're actually, lo actually locking out accounts or not. Obviously if you're an attacker maybe you don't care but we care, we care right? We don't want to make our clients lose money because we're spraying accounts. Uh, so the way I do it I just basically spray during the sleep duration. So I would start at the account number one and I would end at account number X and I would spend X time doing all that. So I would like, if I had 3000 accounts, I would spend an hour spraying those 3000 accounts or maybe even two hours. And then I would wait and then I would spray. So we would we try to sort of dip those those attempts out during, uh, like on an extensive period of time instead of just like spiking a giant amount of login attempts because that's going to appear in the graph. That's my mindset at least. So that that would be, if you're having uh, problems with Azure Lockouts, Azure Smart Lockout, then just try to slow down and spray spray without shredding is basically what I'm saying. Don't shred stuff. Just spray one account at a time and take it slow. That's the only way. What I sadly don't see though is like Azure Smart Lockout is enabled by default. But very few clients actually go in and define a bad word list for passwords. I still see so many shitty passwords. Why are people allowed to set Winter 21 as a password? Why? It, with, a, it, with a company that has like conditional access uh, policy, solo wins one to three, right? And it, on companies that have uh, large budgets, they have con a properly configured or sometimes properly configured conditional access policy. Which, which enforces MFA, why can't they just put down the fucking list of no season passwords? No month passwords? Like, that would make make those 30 whatever password attempts I do on each engagement worthless. They would generally make my external tests so much harder if people just blacklisted those so superly common passwords. And also, I'm a, I'm a huge, I'm a huge, I hate password rotation. I, I'm not a fan of it. I don't see the uh, good feature requirement maybe to define the time period and have it even the send, send throughout. Yeah, right. But I, I, don't, I, I don't get it. I just don't get it sometimes. Um, I just don't. Yeah, and password rotations, for me, it's that's a, that's an old tip. That's something that Microsoft said was good way back, and then they realized that people were setting all these stupid passwords related to months and seasons and years, and now it's not a good thing anymore. I generally, I think a good solid password policy, which requires the users to set a really good unique password that they have to remember and that they only use for company resources, is way better than forcing the user to come up with new passwords every three to six months. I'm go like there's there's a guarantee that if you force users to come up with new passwords every three to six months, they're going to make shitty passwords because that's what's easy to that's what's easy to remember. That's at least my opinion. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree on that. I know a lot of people still favor the rotated passwords because of leaks and stuff, and I guess that's a fair argument, right? That's a valid point. But in my experience, I still see so many shitty passwords related to the months and the years, which may indicate that people, yeah, yeah. This is a great one, right? So uh, the company says that you have to have at least 16 or 12 uh, characters in your password. Winter 20, winter 20. Summer 20, summer 20. Spring 20, spring 20. Spring at spring 20. Like there's... Yeah, you have to... Yeah. I think, I think telling people to have a really strong password that they remember and that they don't share at the, and at the same time telling them that, that they have to come up with a new one every three months is preposterous. Like it's, I don't think it's a, 
I don't think it's fair. Like, obviously, if they use the password manager, that's fine. That's not a problem for anybody. Fuck, I don't even know my passwords. Everything's in my password manager, right? Um, but yeah, it's just sometimes I just think it's a bit of a bit of a yeah. <coughs> oh. That was a rant I didn't expect. I'm sorry. Reading. Oh my god, I can't type. Reading passwords from file. Passwords, reading accounts. Damn. Two bears in. I'm only two asses in, and I'm already starting to mess stuff up. I actually think it's Arg's one. Nice, nice of you to join in the laugh. Enjoy, man. Thank you so much. So Rasta, is it Arx1 or Arx0 for the first input argument? I'm pretty sure that Arx0 is actually the name of the uh, of the program. Watch your Rs, man. <laughs> uh, what is this? Okay, okay, then it should be fine. What is this? What is that? Didn't I put it in temp? Stream. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, so that works. That's awesome. Uh, so I'm going to push it data to the Gista repo. Uh, I maybe 700 is a bit. Yeah, that's the first one because I gave it a. Oh my god, Rasta! Rasta, set it, set it, set up, set up. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna put it to 500 because I think I, I guess I could make it a user input argument as well, but I mean 700 is a bit extensive. Maybe in like 300 is fine. You will go through like thousands of accounts each minute. I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. It's defaults to the US, you can't define that, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think you need to implement Firefox because I don't think um, Microsoft is gonna rate limit this because there's so many people hitting that endpoint. Uh, yeah, I think I think this is fine. So I think I'm going to create like a, I think I'm going to create like a, Stream stuff uh, contains stuff made during streams. Mm, I why did they like? What's the point? Main like why? Oh yeah. Oh no. I know why. I shouldn't get into that discussion. I definitely know why. I'm sorry. I know why. I I get it now. I I take it back. <coughs> Main A! A! <laughs> okay, it's main. I get it now. I get it. It's fine. So let's like put this on the desktop drive. And then I'll push my stuff into it. So let's delete the bin, delete the object. Office and there we go boys and girls Ah, oh, no, I know why I don't like just do this I still have to do it uh. Do I really though? Yes, it is actually. If you, <laughs> if you're flying Greek, uh, 
Yeah, this background is pretty much mandatory. If you don't have this, you're instantly kicked off the team. I also almost got kicked off the team yesterday because I created a tool, which I've been working on for a long time. And the first thing I did wasn't to create the ASCII art. So they print me, they took me in the side, they took me into a dark room, David and uh, Justin, yeah. And they basically told me, dude, you gotta get your prioritization straight. I mean, you can't be here if you're not prioritizing ASCII art. I mean, the ASCII art and name should come before anything. Like, you don't write a single line of code on the project before the ASCII art is in place. And they were pretty strict, and I can confirm that David has huge biceps, so it was pretty firm. Uh, he was pretty firm on that, 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 was, that was something I had to get, get prioritized. Um, so now when I create stuff, I start with the ASCII art. Uh, or it's going to be problems, basically. It's going to be, going to be a huge problem if I don't start. Yeah, I just saw he posted, he like, did it do like 475 LBs uh, deadlifts, right? New uh, personal record. Uh, and that's pretty sick. I mean, he's, uh, yeah, he could, <laughs> he could bench me easily. Yeah, yeah, he could, he could like, he could like, yeah, he could, he could bench me and he could probably like toss me up to the air, in the air like I was a child or something. He, he's just, he's just huge. He's a huge boy now. A giant, giant guy. Uh, one thing I wanted to, I'm not gonna start, that's, I'm gonna leave that for next time, if I do it next time, which I'm probably going to do. But Umsi fail. Somebody made me aware that Defender now catches Umsi fail. And that's an issue, we don't want that. We don't want that, we don't want them signatures. Uh, so I'm just gonna do a quick test here, without this stuff. And I... What? They patched Umsi fail! What? What? <laughs> okay, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. And uh, but but I, I'm I'm sad to say that I'm pretty sure I know what they what they're looking for here. Um. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this happened recently. I think some of them still works. Like, I think, I have a feeling this one might still work, let's see. No, okay. Okay. So they, but I, this, this pretty much stands out, right? Did I just try that? Yeah, I did. But there's, there's so many ways. Okay, wow, they, they did their job. They, they broke my stuff. See you next time, Rasta. I'll join in on your stream uh, on Thursday, that is. Talk to you later, dude. Nice of you to join in. Right, so I'm pretty sure... Yeah. I, I need... So I think the next stream, I'm going to be... be make, I'm going to be making Omsi fail food again. Um, and I think I know how I'm going to do it. Like... Pretty sure this should be... Pretty straightforward. Like, the thing they, they think they seem to detect is this first part here. Oh look, right? So I could probably, <clears throat> let me just do this for ruffles, for, for the rules. Not, no idea if this is going to work, but if I did like this and then I, hmm. Like, I could probably 100% uh, encode this. I, I think, I think you can encode this as well. Uh, in, a, in a way. Yeah, I think so. I think you could just pad out different stuff. So, actually, I'm going to copy that one. I, I'm pretty sure you could just do this. I don't know, though. I would have to look into it more. I don't know. I am. I'm unsure. Yeah, but you could totally. There's totally a way to encode this. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure if I go into uh, David's project, David Kennedy, he has uh, something called Unicorn, right? 
which also deals a lot with the Dempsey bypasses. And I think he can just go like Dempsey. Commits. Yeah, I basically change from bites. Like there should be there should be easily ways to get around this. But yeah, I think James told me about this. That he also had to try a couple of times. But I mean, if you look at the beginning here. The martial stuff is something that is something that comes along every time. Like system automation as well is something I can encode here as well. And then I think this just allocates free memory, right? So this is uses. It's been a long time since I worked on OMC fail. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll have to look into it. But I think basically that's it for today. We only did like a solid one and a half hours. I started a bit early. Um, but yeah, <coughs> questions or anything like that, hit me. I'm all open. I'll, I mean this, uh, according to the Twitter, Twitter poll, this is something I should do. So I think I'm going to be do, try to do it like on Sundays around this time. Because this is just about approximately uh, like a good time for me. I think it's a decent time VVV. I don't think I'm excluding so many people. So I think I'm going to end it here guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you got any questions, uh, hit me up on Twitter or here right now or anything. Uh, I'll try to post this on YouTube. Somebody requested that on Twitter. So I'm probably going to do that. But other than that, it's uh, it's been a joy, man. I, I like doing this stuff. Mostly because I get to drink beer. I have an excuse to drink beer on Sundays, which is like top notch. That's gonna be it. Thank you so much for joining in, guys. Talk to you later. Bye bye.